there are a number of reasons why we may end up with data that contains no speed information. Uh, we may have been given some data by someone that only contained vibration or, or sound data. Equipment may not be available, TACO sensors may be being used elsewhere. Um, sometimes there simply just isn't time to um, rig up a, a, a speed sensor or a TACO sensor. But in these situations, it doesn't necessarily mean we can't then go on and use that data to do speed-related analyses. We'll show you how in this following tutorial. We're going to demonstrate how we can accurately reproduce a speed versus time signal for some data which we didn't capture a TACO signal or um, any speed data. Uh, we've got a data set here. Um, see, we've got three vibration channels, an audio channel, no other information. So we'll pick one of the vibration channels and go to our analysis tab. And here we have a function called reconstruct speed curve, which we'll drag onto our worksheet, connect up. Uh, now we have to decide on an order which we think we'll be able to see when we look at um, waterfall intensity graph and we know from this data that we should be to see second order very well. Um, we also tell it a couple of things about the, what our approximate maximum speed is just so that it can adjust its algorithm accordingly. So we shall OK that. Um, add a view so we can see our result afterwards. We run the worksheet and it produces this waterfall of our data and our second order is down here and we know second order is going to be this dominant order here. So now all we do, just bring that up a little bit more, is join up all the points we can see draw an accurate a representation as we can along this second order. Just finish up down here as far as we can and can't really go any further there so now we OK that. Wait for it to analyse the data and then here we have our result. Speed curve fits our expectation. We thought the data went up to around 5,000 RPM. So there we have a nice speed curve. Now, of course, we don't know how good that is, um, except in this case, we did actually, when the data was originally recorded, there was actually some speed information which we've removed from the data that we can now use. Uh, we just drag that on as an overlay. Uh, the green curve we can now see is the speed curve that was recorded from that during the test and accurately from the, the in this case a vehicle um, overlaid over the blue curve which is the one we've just recreated and we can see from that that we have got a very very accurate speed curve little bump here we could probably smooth that out if we went back and, and redrew um, our second order a little more accurately I was a bit bit quick in, in drawing that. But we can see we get very good agreement between our calculated speed curve and the actual data that was recorded at the time of the test. Now we've expanded our worksheet um, a bit so we can have a look at our data a bit better. We've taken the original data up here, combined it with the measured speed signal that was done at the time of the test and also added in our generated speed curve that we've made with the software. Um, so we've combined all of those using the merge into a single data set here, which if we look at it, um, we see we've got our vibration signals, but we can also see in here the speed signal we generated uh, and speed signal from the original test. What we've then done is um, the selected in here one of our vibration signals to analyse and then done a waterfall and order analysis on that vibration signal 
to produce some order, particularly here we've actually calculated the overall level. Um, on the top path here we've used the measured speed signal and on the bottom path we've done the same analysis but used the speed signal that we generated up here. Um, and on here we've overlaid the, the, the final result. So what we have here is an overall level of one of the vibration signals plotted against um, engine speed, RPM. Um, blue signal was from the measure analyzed using the measured speed signal and the red one was analyzed using the the generated signal that we made earlier on um, and you can see here we get very very good agreement in those those final results as well as actually seeing from the, the speed curve itself that we got um, good agreement we can actually see that if we go on to use that we will get the, the same results as if we'd used the measured speed signal so um, the fact that there may be a speed signal, um, a TACO signal, something hasn't worked or you haven't been able to fit a TACO to a particular test piece doesn't mean that you can't analyse your data against speed. Mm -hmm.